take a look at this. The best evidence we have regarding the Gospels is that these early church fathers right here, Tertullian, Clement of Alexandria, Irenaeus, uh, this fragment that was written in about 170 AD, Justin Martyr, and Papias, all of these people confirm that the writers that we call Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John actually wrote those documents. Second well, see, I have to disagree here because what you're talking about are just basically Christian church fathers that are regurgitating what Papias is saying. Because Papias being the early account attributing these works to these authors, I, I feel like that is the source for actually naming these gospels or at least being able to sort out the different gospels because everybody that comes after Papias would have at least known about Papias attaching these names to these works. Considering earlier how we talked about Papias not exactly being trustworthy and how he used hearsay as facts, I think that unless we can find some kind of reference by Papias that actually asserts that this came from somewhere else other than the mysterious Elder John that is more than likely made up, I don't think that we should trust Papias. As soon as we get rid of Papias, everything else crumbles because everything else is too late in order to verify anything about the Gospels, let alone the authorship. So no, second century sources that claim that they know who authored the Gospels is not evidence of who authored the Gospels. It's just speculation that's been pulled out of the ass of some church father in the second century. Whether that be Papias or somebody else, they just pulled it out of their ass. Secondly, there's only one human link separating John from Irenaeus. That's Polycarp. So this is very close to John. In the grand scheme of things, is that close to John? Yes. But there is a key assumption here in that apparently Polycarp studied under the Apostle John. And this is a common claim from people arguing for some kind of connection between these later Christian fathers and the apostles, or rather, I guess they would say disciples. But the important thing here is that Polycarp never claims to have seen, met, or done anything with the apostle or disciple John. Irenaeus claims that Polycarp said these things, but we don't have any actual texts that have Polycarp claiming to have studied under an apostle or disciple John. Again, this is a Christian church father, Irenaeus, just speculating shit out of his ass and telling us that, oh, this originates from one of the disciples, when in reality, we don't have that. All we have is some old guy who's speculating that his teacher actually studied under John. No real concrete connection there. Claims are from every quarter of the Roman Empire that these were the writers of the, these documents. <laughs> this is an incredibly vague point here. Uh, this is in stark contrast to everything that he said up until this point, because he's got very specific names for like people and uh, time frames and all this other stuff. And then we get this really vague statement about how claims were coming from every quarter of the Roman world that these people wrote these documents. And it's like, well, yeah, because Papias, one of the early church fathers, started claiming this shit, and so that became the narrative in the Christian church. I can't really do anything with a vague bullet point that doesn't give us any kind of specific information. And I think that if anybody confronts you with just vague statements like this, it should be written off until you can get more specific information. Who was saying this from all the corners? Like, do you have four different people? from different walks of life that have no uh, interaction with the Christian church whatsoever that are saying these things? Who are you talking about? These are the questions that you need to be asking whenever somebody confronts you with this kind of shit. There's no rival claims about authorship. Okay, so the fuck what? No rival claims about the authorship? Well, there would still be no rival claims of authorship if it was done anonymously. But even if there were rival claims of authorship, how, how is that going to prove anything? Like, how does that, how does that prove that they were anonymous? How does the lack of rival claims of authorship prove that they're not anonymous? You have a number of books in the New Testament canon that are written by people that are claiming to be somebody else. Like you got the pastoral epistles. Those were written by somebody completely different than Paul, but yet they claim to be written by Paul. And if 
you don't know what the pastoral epistles are, that's uh, First and Second Timothy as well as Titus. And then you have the books of Peter that were not written by Peter, and then you've got one two, and three John that were not written by John. So don't give me this shit about there's no rival claims of authorship. Why should we expect that? And they're unlikely invention, these names. Like Luke is not a big name, right? Who's, who's, he's not even an eyewitness. Why wouldn't you say, or Mark isn't, isn't even a big name. Why wouldn't you say it's the gospel of Peter rather than the gospel of Mark? I mean, if you want to get people to believe something that isn't true, you would say Peter wrote the gospel, not Mark. In fact, there's a gospel written a hundred years after Peter was dead called the gospel of Peter. And we know it wasn't written by Peter, but somebody forged, put Peter's name on it to get the New Testament believers to try and think it was a true document from Peter. But we know it's written a hundred years after he's dead. Well, it's kind of funny that he mentions this because the books in the Bible that are supposedly written by Peter are not actually written by Peter. They're written by who the fuck knows? Nobody knows because somebody falsely attributed those books to Peter. But we know that they weren't written by Peter because they were written well after uh, Peter was dead as well. We don't even know if Peter could fucking write. There are some people out there that want to cast doubt on whether or not Paul actually wrote any of the epistles that are attributed to him. We know that there are a few that are not written by Paul, but there are at least seven letters that are written by the same person that calls himself Paul. And that's really the best that we can do with that. Does it matter if the real Paul wrote those letters? Uh, I don't really know. I don't really care. What I care about is that the same person wrote those seven letters and those seven letters made it into the Bible. And that's what we have to work with. The other letters successfully, I guess, impersonated Paul, at least enough to get into the canon. As to why would they speculate about these people? Well, I feel like this particular argument works against Frank Turek here, considering that one of the biggest themes in the Bible in general is that the least shall be first, or that God chooses from the least among his chosen people in order to really accentuate his glory or how much of an active role he has in the events that are playing out. So if John Mark were to have really written the gospel according to Mark, then it just plays into that particular theme of the Bible. So we should expect people like that to be writing these things or to be the source for these things. It could also be that Papias chose these names because nobody would have thought, oh, he didn't write these things because of this reason. There wasn't really a lot written about the disciples in general uh, or or the apostles, really. But these particular obscure people, nobody's going to really know anything about if they were even real people. So picking obscure characters to do your work for you is actually a really good tactic. But regardless of that, this is a whataboutism. He's just simply saying, well, what about Peter? Why didn't he, they have Peter write this? It's like, well, I don't fucking know. But what we do have, as far as hard evidence goes, is the fact that the Gospels do not name their authors. The titles of the Gospels were later tacked on to the Gospels, most likely by Papias or maybe some other early church father that identified them that way. It doesn't really matter who did it. What we know is that they originally circulated without the titles, and they were later given titles by somebody who was just pulling shit out of their ass. So... It's not a very likely invention to name a gospel after Mark, who's a minor character in the book of Acts. Why exactly is that a mark of authenticity for it? Like him being a minor character, like why would that seem to indicate a more reliable like claim to authorship? This part right here, Frank just sort of speculates about speculating that, oh, because it was a minor character, that means that he actually wrote it because nobody would make it up that he wrote it. Why not? Why would that be a crazy thing? It seems to work with Christian theology. It seems to work with the themes of the Bible to have that particular type of individual write these books, a type of individual that would not be able to actually write these books, but God gave him the ability to write the books, or he somehow was able to write these books because it accentuates the power of God and the role that God has in these events. All of this works within the context of Christian 
Christian theology. Frank is going to need to do a lot more heavy lifting than just, who would have made this shit up? I don't know. It, it doesn't make any sense when you could say Peter wrote it, right? Also, there are no documents that have ever been discovered. I should say no manuscripts ever discovered where we have the title page that didn't say, this is the gospel according to Matthew. This is the gospel according to Luke. This is the gospel according to John uh, or Mark. Ironically, we don't have any manuscript evidence that says that they were originally titled that way. We don't have the original manuscripts. We don't know how they originally were circulated. What we do know is that Papias talks about who wrote the Gospels, but he gets key facts wrong about his particular version of the Gospels. Like what I mentioned before with Matthew, Papias thought that there's like a Hebrew version uh, that was going around at the time that was written prior to the uh, Greek version. But what we know is that the Greek version was the first version that was written, uh, not the other way around. There, and, and how we know this is that there are a lot of uh, Greek phrases and constructions in the Gospel of Matthew that would not translate well or would not or, or would be easily noticed if they were translated from Hebrew. And there's a number of Hebrew phrases that wouldn't necessarily translate into Greek all that well. And so that would be noticeable. And what we find is that we don't have that. We don't have any, well, for one thing, we don't have any manuscript evidence of an earlier Hebrew version of the Gospel of Matthew. But what we do have in the earliest version of Matthew is a Greek manuscript. So Papias is most likely just making stuff up. He's just attaching names that he thinks fits to each gospel, and that has become who the gospel is according to. But we don't have any evidence whatsoever that they originally circulated with titles, uh, and for uh, Papias to make mistakes like he does, it seems to indicate that they originally did not have any titles attached to that. I also want to point out how Frank Turk seems to be using an illogical argument from silence here, that because we don't have manuscripts where the titles are all mixed up or titles have different names on them or something like that, or or we, we have manuscripts, uh, the original manuscripts that don't have any titles on them whatsoever. He's basically saying, oh, we don't have these things, so therefore they always had titles. He's just using an illogical argument from silence here. And it's illogical because we can't conclude from the evidence given that they always had titles. In fact, the evidence points in the other direction that they did not.